Let's move on to the co-feature just before this fight. It's going to be heavyweights, including a fan favorite in the New York, New Jersey area, Adam Koznowski. Koznowski's a Polish-American. He's an immigrant with his family that came to the United States when he was uh, young. Uh, he has been a popular fighter, including fighting at the Barclays Center. It is expected, and Dan, this is not an exaggeration, he's going to have thousands of fans that are there. And a notable opponent, a former Turkish Olympian, a big guy that can also punch in Ali Aaron Demerezian. All right, these are two big dudes. There's not a lot of defense here. Look at the knockout props, kids, just to give you an idea here. I'm actually surprised that Kuznowski is getting that kind of number on the knockout prop. All right, Dan, give us a little more, including this is really a crossroads fight for, for AK Babyface, as we know. Well, Tell the audience more about that here on BetUS. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, at one point, Konaski was one of the top up-and-coming contenders in the heavyweight division. A very popular fighter, as you mentioned, at Barclay Center. He, like you said, is from Poland originally, but he's lived his whole life practically in Brooklyn and has seen his fan base there grow and grow and grow. I've covered most of his fights that have taken place in that building and watched as it went from a few hundred people wearing the red and white and waving the Polish flags, red and white, of course, the color of the Polish flag. And it grew from a few hundred to a few thousand to many thousands to an arena filled with uh, the Brooklyn fans cheering him on. Uh, they haven't had a big Polish star in this country to root for for a long time. I guess you got to probably go back to the days of the one time uh, Polish contender, Andrew Galata. Uh, All right. But, uh, you know, Adam has grown into a very popular fan favorite there. And also, he was becoming a very good heavyweight. He had scored some some good wins and had been some very exciting fights. And he was on a, on a pathway where it was most likely that he was going to wind up getting a world title fight against Deontay Wilder. And then what happened? Deontay Wilder lost a rematch to Tyson Fury, lost the title, and Kwanaski lost uh, two fights to Robert Hellenius, both by knockout. So his career has, went, has gone from being a a lock for a world title opportunity cruising along to now a career that may be coming to a close with another loss in terms of being a, a notable a side, you know, uh, televised fighter. So this is an extremely important fighter. I cannot overstate how important this is for his career because he is coming off of back to back knockout losses to Robert Hellenius, who was the underdog when they met the first time around. Most people thought, well, you know, maybe it was kind of freakish the way he lost that first fight. So they did the rematch he got knocked out again and uh, put his career in a lot of jeopardy. And so in Demerezin, he's fighting, again, a solid opponent, not a world beater, but a guy that's won four or five fights in a row, has a lot of knockouts, has that amateur pedigree that you and I have talked about many times as an Olympian for his country of Turkey back in 2016. Uh, his only loss, uh, a very reputable, credible loss to a, a fighter named Efe Ajagba, a very big, powerful uh, heavyweight who also was an Olympian, uh, for uh, for Nigeria several years ago, uh, and that was his only defeat, and that was a points loss. He didn't get stopped, and he just got kind of outboxed in that fight. Um, this is a tough this is a tough uh, a tough assignment, I think, for Robert Eleni uh, for, not for Robert Elenius, but for Adam Konaski in this matchup because you know he there. He, I don't know how much pressure he's putting on himself, but anybody that's looking from the outside knows this is a the epitome of a must win for this guy. Uh, and he's going to do it at home in front of the hometown fans, and we'll see if he can live up to uh, and perform to that level. There is certainly going to be an atmosphere at Barclays Center in Brooklyn for this co-feature fight. It's going to be loud. And look, Aaron Demezian's probably got uh, some fans that will be there too, some Turkish New Yorkers, some people from Turkey that will be there that will be making noise as well. And Stop, again, It's going to be a Kanaki crowd. Stop that. Well, but I mean, there'll be some maybe that if he does something, you'll hear some crowd. But yes, ma mainly it's going to be for AK Babyface in this one. And look, we need to say this to the audience. You want to be there at the opening bell on this co-feature if you're there for Showtime and PBC's card, because there's not a lot of pretense here. There's not a lot of defense potentially here. And there could be when we were saying Garcia Benavidez will warm up, the warm up uh, will be in the back before they get up to the ring, and then these guys may be brawling in round one, in round two. So let's go on the record, and it's interesting because the the peeps, the savages, are going back and forth about is this a distance fight, can it get to the over, and we even have some line movement that we're going to talk about. So let's go on the record here, and Dan interestingly says, I love Konaski here uh, on this, uh, well, I, but I am not sure on the knockout or I the know. win. Right? I don't. I don't love him in this fight. I'm picking him in this fight. You're picking to him. Me, so let's not miscalculate my words. This is 
you and I were talking about before the show, and anybody that's been watching the show, no, I always make the pick on the knockout, the distance, the over, right. the how it's going to go. Because that's just the way that as a boxing reporter, we're seasoned to be when fights come up and you're always asked, who do you have? And you give them, you know, the pick. Sometimes they put it in the website or they put it in the newspaper or whatever. Right. I hate this fight from that standpoint. So for the first time, I think since we've been doing the show, I'm only on the money line for the Kanaski win. I'm not okay. going win by knockout, win by decision. I'm taking him to win the fight somehow, some way to get the job done. But it's a it's a it's a fascinating fight because there's so much at stake for his career and 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 because of the way he fights, you know, he's a high contact guy. He's not a guy that boxes. I think they've probably tried to I know they've tried to preach a little bit more defense to him in this training camp to to keep himself at least somewhat out of harm's way compared to what it was when he fought against Hellenius. But his mentality is to go in there and fight you know he's not a young fighter so you don't it's hard to change the ways uh in just uh you know a, a two-month training camp of what you've been doing your entire career he, he wants to go in there and and, and get into a rumble and uh, his opponent is no is not gonna uh you know he's similar to that style also in some regards so you know could it go longer yeah it's possible but could it be an explosion around one or two absolutely so i'm picking konaski with with uh with some trepidation, but I'm just taking him to win the fight. I'm not going to touch the uh, the prop on it. And so, again, for the strategy here, if you like Konaski, as you say, uh, but you're not sure of the win, the W-H-E-N, just go on the money line. And it's paying well on the money line, as you see there right. for Dan, on plus 150. That, way that, was, get, that was the reason. That was yes. the reason for that. And you that way you get well. the knockout whenever it comes, you're fine. And even if it goes the distance, which I don't think you and I believe it's going to, uh, then you're still fine. In my case, I like the value of plus 400. I am surprised that it still remains that high for a Konowski knockout here. So I'm going to take advantage of that, and I'm even going to double up. There is, to me, there are a few givens in life. That's death, that's taxes, that's Rayfield from 15 feet at the foul line if he's shooting free throws. There are a few givens in life. This fight is not seeing the seventh round, no matter what happens. And actually, they moved the line. The line earlier this morning, the over-under was 6.5. It has now been moved on BetUS to 8.5, which means a lot of people uh, must have found the under. I, I believed in the under at 6.5. I definitely believe in the under at 8.5 rounds. In well, this. Here's, here's, it will, it will not see the seventh round, Dan. Well, in this one thing about that. Konaski's been in some distance fights. Not all of his fights have been in brawls where there's chaos. Number two, his opponent, Demrezian, took some very big shots against Jagba, who for one punch is probably a better, not probably, definitely is a better puncher than uh, than Konaski is. So he stood up to those shots. So I think that he's got a decent enough chin and that I think Konaski might be slightly gun shy given the two sure. back to back knockout losses. And so I can see a scenario where it would go rounds, possibly hit the over. What about that Pete? Distance. Can I interrupt? That Pete yeah. just said Trey X in the chat here on the live show said uh, Kozanowski has the body puncher. There you see it. Definitely the superior body puncher. Forget about just the shots to the head. How sure. big of a factor do you think that is? I mean, anytime you can make a body shot, it can do damage for sure. I don't consider Konaski to be that great of a body puncher. I don't, I mean, yes, I guess he's pretty good, but I don't consider that to be uh, a major factor necessarily in his his offensive game. Um, so, you know, again, if you can land the shot, any body shot is going to, I don't care who you are, uh, you can get knocked out with a good body shot. But it, to me, that was never uh, one of the main factors when I was thinking about if Adam's going to win the fight. It's It would probably be more from, uh, just the, the accumulation of punishment because when Adam does get knockouts, he's not a guy that just puts you out with one punch. He's a guy that breaks you down, breaks you down and, and uh, clubs you to death and gets you out of there. Um, you know, if you watch his fights, he's not a guy that just goes in there and gets you out in one round or two rounds with one di giant shot, breaks you down, beats you up and, and puts you out. Um, but again, his opponent, Demrezin showed himself to have a pretty good beard taking shots against a Jagba who's right. a tremendous one punch puncher. So you know, I'm not as convinced, TJ, as you are, that somehow, some way, this is not seen the eighth round or the ninth Interesting round. Interesting on the bet US line again, and before we move on, that not only did I lose on uh, the number of rounds, but I'm still fine because I liked the under, but I, I had like plus 130 
at the over under being six and a half and taking the under. It's now minus one thirty five, as you see there on the screen. For so the, you like that that went up to the eight and a half, right? I like it. It went up to eight and a half, but I'm losing my value. What that means, obviously, is there are some people that have been betting uh, Kanaski on the under, on the on the under to win. And so that moved the line up and it and it decreased the value there, but I'm still gonna take it. I'm gonna take it anyway. Which, I way, like the knockout, of, I like the under. Because of the scenarios that we've been talking about, because of that movement that I knew about before we came on the show, that's why I just didn't I didn't touch that Funny part line. of the fight. I just went, you know what, Kanaski by win, by hook or by crook, however he gets the job done. And when it's all said and done, he's the one that gets the hand raised. What do you so. say? Say it again for the audience here. You would much rather be what? You would Oh no, I say this all the time. Fight. I would rather be I'd rather be uh, right. I'd rather hit the singles and doubles all day than hit the occasional home run because if you hit the singles and doubles, it just your 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 bank account just rises and rises mm -hmm. and rises. If it rises by a few dollars or by twenty or fifty or hundred, I'll take that all day long. I want to be in the plus side, whatever it is. At the end of the week, at the end of the show, whatever it is, you want to be in the black, not in the red. And uh, you on that. those singles, doubles, and and again, and people have been watching. No, I always am picking the results. I have never yet since we've started the show picked a money line fight. And, uh, you know, this it's sort of like when I when I'm scoring fights, very, very rarely am I scoring 10, 10 rounds occasionally in mm -hmm. terms of not picking the result. This is one of those rare times I'm going on the money line. But he's still on the record. He likes AK Babyface, and it will be some atmosphere. And some have said uh, a free plug here. We do a show with our buddy from TopHeavyweights.com, Sean. Uh, Sean said this should have been the main event. I understand why it's not. He understands why it's not. He's like, this This is going to probably be a better fight than the main event is in Garcia Benavides in terms of action, knockdowns, roaring crowd. We'll see. Of course, we're saying all this, and hopefully we don't get a dull fight. I don't think we'll get a dull fight out of the You know, but Danny, fight. listen, Danny Garcia, all respect to that, but Danny Garcia is the bigger name, the more accomplished fighter. And also, and this can't be understated, he's from Philadelphia, but he has developed a fan base in Brooklyn at that right. arena, Barclay Center, because he has fought there. This will be his ninth fight, and all of those fights, to my recollection, have all been the main event. He was in the first main event they ever had in that building in 2012 with a spectacular knockout against Eric Morales and has fought very big fights there against Sean Porter, against Pauli Malinaji, against Keith Thurman. You know, he's had just one big fight there after another, fought against uh, Zab Judah in that building. So he's had some, some big-time fights in Brooklyn. All right, fair enough. And again, for the peeps that are watching us live here at 1 Eastern Time on Friday, we are...